Good morning, everybody. Yeah. Good morning, Dave. Oh, yeah. Good, thanks. So, um, so what do we got today on Theology Thursday? It's good to have you all with us where uh, we talk theology and, uh, and cover a very broad spectrum of questions, actually, here. Well, we're not really afraid to, to hit with. We've hit some pretty controversial topics on occasion. Yep, absolutely. Not afraid. Let's go for it. Okay. What's today's controversial topic? <laughs> well, I, I thought we'd look at the, what I term the elephant in the room. Um, it's, it's usually something that everyone knows is there, but maybe is not wanting to or willing to address. Yeah. Uh, and we have to admit that when it comes to the 21st century church, uh, especially the evangelical church in the West, to be quite candid, there is something of an elephant in the room, and its name is scandal. Oh, oh Dave. Uh, let's not talk about that. Let's, <laughs> let's go back to Adam and Eve. Yeah. Um, in recent years, it seems that the church has constantly been rocked by scandals yeah. of one sort or another. It, 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 they just seem to keep happening, whether they're financial or moral or in some cases mm. even spiritual abuse. Issues that just seem to keep coming up and the church gets blasted yeah. every time. Um, yeah. And I know, like, you know, in Australia it happens, but in America it does seem to happen a lot more. Mind you, they're like a lot bigger than us. They're ten times, yeah. ten times their our size, and so they've got a lot more churches, and so I suppose... You know, yep. just just from a. We're, we're not going to mention any specific individuals no. now in, in this. That's not the point of the exercise. What we want to do is face the issue. Yeah. So that that elephant in the room. The uh, scandal. First of all, I think it's realistic to say that uh, that these failings of church leaders and the the scandals that accompany them are not really as common as the media seems to make out, yep. or maybe that we might even think. Um, it I'll might give you that. I, I think it might seem that more evangelical leaders have been caught in right. scandals recently, but I, that's partly due to the vast amount of media coverage right. and attention that these scandals are, are given. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they've happened down through the years um, without the, the publicity, but now yeah. the publicity makes it look as though there's so many more um, things happening. Right. Um, there, there are thousands of evangelical Christian leaders, pastors, right. missionaries, writers, school teachers. And well, like in our movement alone, we've yeah. got over a thousand churches in the um, ACC, the Australian Christian Churches. Um, and, and plenty of them have never participated in anything remotely scandalous. No, absolutely. Um, so the vast majority of evangelical Christian leaders are men and women who love and serve God. They're faithful to their spouses and families. Good they man. handle their activities with the utmost honesty and integrity. The failures of a few should never be used to attack the character of all. Mm. And I think that's an important thing to, to underline because that does happen. It does, and I think, like you said, the media loves a good scandal. Yep. So the media, uh, uh, you know, can can make it appear that you know all you know Catholic priests or all yep. whatever that you know they're they're all like this. And the truth is, no, there's not. It's a failure of a few. Yeah, yeah. But the reality is that some do happen. There, there are some Christian leaders who fall, and, and I'm I'm deeply saddened by the sin of, yep. of Christian leaders. Sad. For the harm that they do to their own lives and especially to the lives of others. Yeah. Um, I'm saddened by the heartache that I see it cause those who, <coughs> Excuse me. because of what has happened, they struggle with their own faith and their relationship with the church. I'm disappointed, I'm saddened, but not surprised because sin. Well, we're humans. Right? That's it. Sin, horrible sin, happens in the world every day. And the church exists in the world. Sure, we're not of the world, but we are in the world. And we're very yeah. much in the world. And the church is comprised of ordinary men and women. And so we're not immune to sin. No. Um, no it not that that excuses it. It does. Absolutely, absolutely not. not. And when I said, yeah, yeah. yeah I, absolutely no excuse, yeah. you know, and sin needs to be yeah. called to account. Yeah. Absolutely it agree with that. Behavior, but it, yeah, yeah, but you do. It it does. It's not surprising, no, is what you're saying. No, that's that's right. Sin happens even in the church. That's the reality. Um, the the same offences that become so shocking when we hear that they were committed by a Christian leader are actually committed every day by parents, friends, workmates, neighbours. But there's something different about the 
the, uh, the perpetration of, by a Christian leader, uh, to some degree it's a greater sin because it impacts the lives of so many others. Yeah. And you, you, expect, you expect a higher level of accountability yeah. from your leaders, from people that, uh, especially, like you said, in a, in a Christian setting, these are people who teach you know, what the Bible says. Yeah. And so if they are not doing the things they're teaching, it's, it's particularly scandalous. It's you a know? place of trust, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. You know? um, Scandalon is, a, is the Greek word from which we get our English word scandal, and literally it means a stumbling block. So a scandal is something that trips us up and affects us mm. in, a, in a dangerous way. A scandal happens when someone sees the sin in another and basically shakes their head in superior disgust. You know, um, mm. I would never do a thing so terrible or so stupid. But, but here's the interesting thing. God, who is incapable of sin, when he sees sin, when he sees the fall of a Christian leader, he doesn't... Yeah, it's the one who actually is superior. <laughs> he, is superior. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't shake his head and, and no, declare he that he would never do anything so stupid. His first reaction is sadness. Yeah. Um, sure, disappointment, but, but he sorrows at the sin and the pain that it has caused. But then he looks to see how he can best demonstrate his grace towards yeah. both the sinner and the victim. Yeah. And sin should sad us. Absolutely. It should disappoint us, even cause us grief. Yeah. But our initial response should not be to scandalise it, to no. make it a stumbling block. I don't know about you, Dave, but like every time you see something in the news about, you know, some pastor or priest or, you know, I for me my heart just sinks and I just yeah. go, oh, really? Yeah. Like, you know, you feel for the victim, first of, yeah. first of course, whoever's been hurt. But just like, really, come on, you know, like, can we try? Like, we, well, I'm sure they do try, but they fail. And, uh, and yeah, you, your heart just sinks because, you know, this has caused pain. This yeah. has caused grief. This is, this is not okay. And there's no value in spreading the word about the sin, but we can look at, at how we can best express the grace of God to both the sinner and the victim. Mm. I think that's one of the key things. Um, don't be too quick to judge. An accusation is no proof of sin. Uh, there are plenty that's of true. accusations that are simply malicious and ultimately proven to be to be right. false. Mm. Um, and people, you know, people defend themselves to say. Hey, look, you know, that accusation is not entirely accurate. Um, this is not, you know, look, let's look at both perspectives. I get yeah. that. Yeah, you don't want to just jump to the conclusion that just because some um, priest or pastor or minister is, is accused of something that, oh, yeah, they all do that. No, no, just let's hear it out. You know, each person is... That's right. Is, we, um, we, can't, we can't assume guilt. No, don't assume it, no. As human beings, we, we have... This but don't in, assume innocence either. No, no, no. no. Just, just you, it's going to be all right. Here we go. Yeah, uh, we have this desire. It's almost an evil desire to punish our neighbours for the, the pain or embarrassment that that their sin has caused either us or those near to us, and, and we, we often see that demonstrated by the, the um, what I call the modern the modern sport of, of social media shaming. Yeah. You know, they, they, people love to get on there and uh, be the ones that... Yeah. Um, so the world's response to scandal shows how self-righteousness treats sin, mm -hmm. not with holy sorrow or fear of God mm -hmm. or with neighbourly love, but with cruel humiliation. And mm -hmm. that's not God's no. way of dealing with it. Now, first of all, remember, sin is sin. Right. A Christian leader may have been involved in a moral, financial or some other sin, but their sin really isn't any different from the person that gossips after church or lies to their boss when they arrive late for work or right. maybe they cheat with their taxes or whatever. Um, right. Before God, sin isn't defined by its magnitude. Sin is sin. Mm. If God forgives all of our sin regardless, we should also learn to extend grace to others, including Christian leaders. We, we need to remember that every man of God is, first of all, a man. And I think sometimes we forget that. 
right. they're not God. No. They're just a man who serves God. Um, sometimes we, we tend to be so shocked and surprised when Christian leaders miss the mark. Uh, that we make all sorts of excuses for ourselves when we do exactly the same. Yeah. Um, but the truth is, if, if we miss it sometimes, they too can, 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 can miss it. Um, yes, there's a higher standard uh, that the Bible holds church leaders accountable to, but they are still deserving of grace. Uh, yeah, it needs to be made clear. Yeah, I was just going to say, what do you mean by yeah. they deserve grace? Because yeah. I've seen in the past some people go, well, God's a God of grace, let's forget this ever happened. No. And that's not what you mean. No, no, no. We're it, not making excuses to sin, nor suggesting that there should be a blind eye to it. Not for no, one no. minute. And there sin, does need to be accountability. Sin and its consequences has to be faced. When a Christian leader fails, there needs to be a process of correction and discipline. They cannot continue to lead as they did before they mm. fell. Uh, so, for example, a, a pastor who commits adultery has lost his right to hold that office in the church and he has to be willing to submit to counsel and correction. It may be possible to restore such a person to a, a ministry role. It may be. But it is hard to recover broken trust. Yeah. And so most leaders that fall in moral areas find it hard to return to a position of trust and leadership. That's, you know, the, the, mm -hmm. there's no suggestion of covering up. Uh, there's no suggesting that saying grace means no consequence, mm -hmm. but there can be grace shown as the consequence is faced. For sure. So, But then when you've got, um, like, adultery is not an illegal thing, it's not a criminal act. No. Um, and there's plenty of businessmen, politicians, yes. uh, many leaders around our community that there is no consequence if they commit adultery. But we hold it's a not biblical illegal. standard. But it's Christian leaders, there's this higher standard of, yeah. uh, that's it's a higher moral standard, if you like. So legal legality aside, you know, there's this higher moral standard. But when somebody does do something illegal, like, you know, say if they stole money or, yeah. um, you know, if they were, you know, caught for fraud or, uh, or whatever they did or, or, or so, uh, an illegal act, uh, some sort of abuse or whatever, then there also needs to be, uh, you know, a, a criminal charges yes, there's and there's consequences. consequences. Yes, and that could mean um, a serious, like jail time, it could yeah. be a fine, it could, whatever it is. Um, so grace, giving grace to somebody is from our hearts. Yeah. Uh, but and so that we can like you know I know plenty of people whose ministry it is to go to jail yep. and minister to people saying yes you do have to to cop the consequence yep. for what you've done absolutely but but grace says we'll come and visit you we and we can still you. love you as a yep. child of God as somebody who's and and especially of course if you're if you're repentant if you're yep. sorry what for what you've done and and um, well grace you know, and justice are not opposing terms no. Um, and I think sometimes we think they are. Sometimes justice, um, so the admission that sin has occurred and the consequences faced, um, it, it might be that that is the grace that's needed for the victim of the sin, for mm. example, uh, the abuse or whatever. That, that, they, that seeing of justice being meted out uh, is the grace that they need to help them to be restored to wholeness. So they're not opposing terms. Paul, who is one of the great proponents of grace, did not try and cover up the sin in the Corinthian church. No. Uh, rather, he sought to bring it out, uh, expose it, and deal with correction mm -hmm. and with grace. Right. Um, the fact that a faster pastor falls into sin doesn't... A faster pastor. A faster pastor. Uh, he falls into sin. It doesn't mean that God can never restore or use them again. King David once fell into sin and slept with another man's wife and in a bid to cover it up, he, he killed her husband. Yet he repented, he returned to God and he was restored. So we And there was an incredible consequence. God himself um, punished David yes. for doing that. Yes. It wasn't like God said, oh, okay, you're sorry, yeah. let's forget that happened. No, there was a massive yeah, consequence. You can read the story yep. yourself. Um, you know, he didn't get away with murder, literally. No. He, he paid a very high yep. price for that. So we have to remember that restoration is possible, but if there is to be restoration, it's a process. It's not an event. We don't just say, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. No, it's a process of restoration. Uh, 
So why does it happen? Why do leaders fall? Why are the effects so great when it happens? Mm. I suggest that besides the normal human factors that we've already mentioned, uh, in the evangelical church especially, we often grant our churches, or our church leaders, a rock star or even godlike status. Um, now, it's, it's true that we are to honour our leaders, and the Bible talks about double honour for mm. those who labour in the word, in other words, yeah. church leaders. And, um, and specifically, I mean, that you probably don't get that culture in the Catholic or Anglican uniting churches. That is more of the contemporary church yep. uh, coming out of a culture that, you know, is is a very celebrity type culture, yep. um, you know, in the, in the United States, for yep. example. Uh, and so pastors are often, you know, can be seen as celebrities or, you know, that rock star thing. And, and we're certainly not, well, uh, we're not, neither of us are rock stars, just in case you couldn't <laughs> tell. The, uh, we, we Unless should, we were ZZ Top, grew <laughs> happy. <laughs> we should never, we should never elevate a leader into a position no. where we presume or help them to presume for themselves that they are so holy and righteous that they can do no wrong at all. Yeah. And some evangelical leaders allow this to happen, mm. and some may even encourage it, and it can result in pride, which mm. in itself is a sin, um, but that can lead to a traumatic fall. Well, it's, you know, Dave, again, you, you started by saying we're humans. Yep. We, people, all humans, regardless of your faith, if, if you're a human being, you can easily enjoy the pendulum, the pendulum, the, the, uh, the pedestal. You can enjoy being on the pedestal when people revere you, when people look up to you and they honour you, and that can go to your head, anyone's head, you know, and, uh, and you can start to believe you know your own your yeah. own press releases how amazing you are yeah. and how incredible and and so if you've got a whole church of people saying oh, our pastor is the best or our priest is amazing or our minister is incredible and he's just so wonderful and so nice and he can start believing that yeah. and forget that actually you know what I just settle down I'm not perfect I'm a he, far he's, from he's perfect feet still hit the ground yeah you know so you know I'm not saying to dishonor. Because the truth is the Bible does teach us to honour, yep. you know, everyone. You know, yes, it does say to honour your leaders, but it also says honour children. Yep. And, of course, honour God. And that's the big one. As we honour God, um, we treat each other with love and respect. Well, many, I think many Christian leaders begin their ministry with a spirit of humility and, yep. and reliance on God. But as that grows and thrives they sometimes can be tempted to take some of the glory for themselves. And some, sadly, uh, while paying lip service to God, actually attempt to manage and build the ministry in their own strength and wisdom. And this leads to pride very often mm. and a fall. Uh, God, through the prophet Hosea, warned, he said this, when I fed them, they were satisfied. When they were satisfied, they became proud and they forgot me. Wow. That's Say that again. <laughs> a group, that's a great scripture. When I fed them, they were satisfied. Mm. When they were satisfied, they became proud mm. and then they forgot me. It's Hosea 13.6. And that can be very much the story of some people in, in Christian leadership. Sure. Very few, and I've got to stress that, very few, but it does happen. Yeah. Remember also that Satan and, and his demonic host more aggressively are going to attack and tempt those in leadership because they know that a scandal involving a leader can have a devastating uh, result, you know, yeah. um, damage the shepherd, sure. kill the shepherd, scatter and, the sheep. And look, the, let's face it, the bigger the influence of that particular yeah. leader... Like if, if somebody accused me or if I was caught up in some scandal, let's face it, it's not going to affect many people. We have a little church, you know, I, I, my influence is, is quite local, uh, but there are pastors or ministers or priests that have massive influence. Imagine the Pope, you know, like just global influence. Yeah. And if he was caught up in a scandal, so you know the devil would love yeah. to take out the Pope and cause, you know, global scandal. Um, so, so, you know, that affects Christians and non Christians. Yeah. Yeah, it but affects everybody. Yeah. yeah. So, when we elevate leaders to those sort of positions, we risk great fall. And, and far too often, the fall comes very publicly. 
uh, and especially today with social media and, oh, yeah. and the, the general media. And when, when it happens, people go into denial mm. and disbelief. Initially, we don't want to accept that the rumours and allegations hold water. Then we start to feel betrayed as though we've been deceived the whole time. Uh, um, look, I, I, I'm going to say this. I've been through that um, from the, the victim end of being badly, badly let down in leadership. And wow. you do, you feel those emotions. Um, it's, it's, it's hard to explain, but you really feel betrayed and, yeah. and, and hurt. And after this, we start to see pieces of evidence and we become disappointed. We say, it's true. There's the evidence, you know, and, and, and then we get angry and we get hurt. And sometimes we might feel all of these emotions together and it causes some to even question yeah. um, and they wonder about all sorts of things and they start to withdraw from, from not just the fallen leader but yeah. from the church and some never recover. Do you know, Dave, I, I call it, because I've certainly experienced the, the, what I call paying the tax of somebody else. Um, you know, a person say, you know, finds out that I'm a pastor and immediately the walls go up and immediately they assume certain things because they've been hurt by someone else. And I go, well, I'm paying, I'm paying someone else's tax. Yeah. That pastor who hurt you, I'm yeah. now paying his tax. Yeah. Um, I, I haven't hurt you, but, you know, and, and it is hard, let's face yeah. it, when you've been hurt, yeah. it's hard not to do that. You know, yeah. people do uh, get to that point where they, you know, they're going to um, uh, judge judge all of us, everybody in ministry, because they've been hurt by one. But you said yourself right at the beginning, you know, there's there's well over a thousand churches in just our movement, just the Australian Christian churches in Australia. Yeah, it doesn't happen. There's, there's, there's multiple thousands of churches there. And, and the vast majority of pastors and ministers and priests are lovely people yeah. who are there for good reason and they've never done anything wrong. And some, some people get to the point where they say, look, uh, a Christian leader sins. Uh, I don't want to be a Christian anymore. It's interesting when when an atheist leader falls. We don't see people walking around saying, "I don't want to be an atheist anymore." Right. That doesn't happen. But it seems to happen with Christians. Mm -hmm. uh, look, it's okay to grieve if you've been hurt by the actions of a Christian leader. I really am sorry. It should never have happened. No. We we don't have to live in denial. So. You know, we don't have to pretend that the ugly scandal, the sin, didn't happen. No. People sometimes bring reproach on the church because of their sin. The prophet Jeremiah wrote a whole book yeah. lamenting the sins of Israel. He, he said in, in Lamentations 5.16, The crown has fallen from our head, woe to us, for we have sinned. Mm. But then he goes on and says, Restore us to you, O Lord, yeah. that we may be restored. Grieving can and should actually lead us to hope. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. likewise, we can learn from the mistakes that people make. We, we've all had mentors, mm -hmm. people who have taught us much about God and, and about ministry, but we can also learn a lot from watching the mistakes that some leaders have made. And if someone in ministry hurts you, take a mental note, that's not the way I'm going to treat people. Yeah. Um, and you can actually turn disappointment into blessing if you learn from it. But the, the line to walk, there's a fine line that where you don't want to become judgmental. No. You know, or, or be arrogant saying, I would never do that. Yeah. Like you said, no, I'm not going there. I don't want to become no, no, judgmental no. and arrogant. Uh, you know, judge not lest you be judged. You know, he who is without I'm sin right. cuts yeah. the first stone. But yeah, and there's certainly, please don't read into any of this today no, that... No that uh, there's any excuse for sin. Yes, people need to be held accountable. Pastors and ministers and priests need to be held accountable yep. and go to jail if necessary. If their sin is that bad, yep. that they that's the consequence, fine, let that happen. But let's also try to keep a heart of grace, try yep. to keep our spirits sweet yep. so that the water in here doesn't get poisoned, it doesn't get polluted because of you know one person's sin. We've got to be faithful in praying for our leaders, knowing the problems that leaders have to deal with, the temptations they suffer, the stress they have to endure. We, we should be praying for our leaders, asking God to strengthen them, protect them and encourage them. Um, but let's just say this as we kind of close this down a bit. Um, make sure that your faith is in God mm -hmm. alone. 
Don't have your faith in a leader, a pastor, a priest, or any individual, no other person. Don't determine that a leader you trusted missed the mark and, and you followed his error or ran away from God. No, let your trust be in God. The purpose of God for his church is going to go on with or without you, me, your pastor, or any other individual leader. We, we can never forget this. God's going to ultimately turn every situation yeah. for good. So our faith, our trust is in God alone. Yeah. And if we have it that way, we can s survive the scandals yeah. that are thrown at us on occasion. Absolutely. And look, from, from my heart as a pastor, can I ask you, don't, don't judge all pastors because of the failings of a few. Yeah. Uh, most of us wouldn't do those sorts of things or hopefully would never do those sorts of things. Um, and we, we also, you know, we walk by the grace of God and trust that he's going to help us um, to be who, more like Jesus every day. So, um, so yeah, when scandal comes along, um, you know, it is sad. And that's our first thing. It does, look, it, yeah. it does. But that's, that's the reality. And that should be our response is sadness and prayer and say, yeah. God, can you please do something, help this situation in everybody involved, both. And, and help me to have grace. Yeah, and help me to be, yeah, good one. All right, well, God bless you this week. And if you have been caught up in something like that, if you have been hurt by a Christian leader, Hey, listen, if you're in our area, please come and give us a, have a chat. We're more than happy to chat with you and uh, empathize with you. Sit down, have a coffee and, um, and hear your story uh, and pray with you um, because, you know, we know it happens. But uh, maybe wherever you are in the world, maybe you can find somebody who, you know, is a listening ear and, uh, and will also pray with you. So God bless you and uh, we'll see you on Sunday if you're in our area. Otherwise, I'll see you next Thursday, Theology Thursday. God bless you.